Welcome to the channel viewers. This video has come up today, the 15th of the 8th, 2024, from Jeff Parker, um, blind advocate, uh, IAC members getting big grant money. Let's see what uh, Jeff has to say about the NDIS. I want to talk about Pauline Hanson. She has a thing on YouTube which I've subscribed to. Um, and one of her YouTube releases the other day was talking about her response to the reforms. Now, whether you like Pauline Hanson or not, I actually do like Pauline Hanson. Um, I don't agree with everything she says. But at least she's upfront and honest and you know where she stands on, on, on each, each item or each issue um and there's only been one other politician uh in the past that has been very similar which was john howard i personally didn't like him as a as a person um but one thing i did like about him is you knew, knew where he stood on each each issue because he was upfront and honest and if you didn't like it you didn't like it now i don't know about anyone else out there but i really like people like this you might not like what they think or believe, but at least you know where they, where they stand. Now, Pauline Hanson's uh, speech to Parliament about the reforms that she's going to that one day she's going to support them. There was very little in that speech that I didn't disagree with, as far as people getting funding. Um, when I first got on the NDIS, it was wasn't easy to get things that you needed but they were achievable um, and that seems to have exploded to where people are getting free holidays and free concert tickets and free accommodation and all that sort of thing i personally know people who have done it i do not agree with it that's not what it, the ndis is for or designed to, to provide it's not for, there to provide people to go away for a weekend, Let me take your picture. to get free travel, free accommodation, free meal allowance, free concert tickets, and free support. That's not what it was designed to, to do. It was designed, if you wanted to go to a concert, and I've asked this question repeatedly from the NDIS, and if I want to go to a concert and it's a couple of hours away in Sydney or Brisbane, then I have to pay to travel to and from those destinations out of my own pocket. I also had to pay for the accommodation out of my own pocket. I had to pay for the tickets out of my own pocket. If I needed a support worker, I would have to pay at least one meal out of my own pocket as well as pay for their accommodation. But somehow people have worked out how to get all this for nothing. I know someone whose support worker went from X amount of hours per week to 24-7 care, seven days. The support worker bought a brand new four-wheel drive and the next minute they're all off having a great holiday gone to Central Australia and Northern Territory. And it was paid for by the NDIS. Now, if you go onto different social platforms, you'll find that there still are thousands and thousands of people screaming out for basic services, absolute basic services. So why are these people screaming for basic services when people are getting free holidays? Support workers are able to buy brand new four wheel drives. How can you go from X amount of hours to go into 24 7 care and still go on holiday? I can't work that one out. And also, I know there's a support worker who provides um, 12 hour shifts, one to one care for three people. I don't know about you, but there's only 24 hours in the day, and she's providing one-on-one -on -one support 
for three individuals, 12-hour shifts, doesn't work out. So these ref reforms were inevitable because people were rotting the system. And let's not forget businesses, not all businesses, some businesses rotting the system as well. Jacking the prices up because they know it's coming from the NDIS. Double and triple a price that the average person would pay for. I know someone who got home modifications done because they couldn't, they can't walk anymore. They couldn't barely stand. So they got their bathroom renovated. The person who did the work got paid a hundred percent of the job up front before before they started the job. And it took that person months to get that person back to finish off all the little mistakes. If it was privatised, like if that was a private person, they'd say, we'll give you 50% up front, and when the job's completed and done to our satisfaction, we'll pay you the other 50%. That's how it's normally done. Let's not forget the NDIA who rented out four floors in a building in Melbourne, but decided to build their own building, their own headquarters, instead of renting four floors out of this huge building in, in Melbourne at a cost of hundreds of millions of dollars, this new building. Why? Why did they need a brand new building when the place they were renting was absolutely suitable? That's a real estate grab. They're building assets out of the money that they're making through NDIS. This guy's pretty good. He's pretty thorough. So, if you want to, look, I, I encourage everyone to go onto YouTube and subscribe to Paul and Hanson's Please Explain. Sometimes it's her speaking in Parliament, sometimes it's cartoons taking the, the mickey out of politicians. It's hilarious and accurate. It's really good. I strongly urge people to go and subscribe to Paul and Hanson's Please Explain on YouTube. How much money is the NDIS wasting on grants? Well, not wasting on grants, but grants being possibly misused. So I decided to have a look into it with the help of a support worker. And we come across a grant that was given, two grants given to one organisation totaling just under $240,000. I, I can't, we've got, we've got a slide coming up. I can't talk, talk our way through it, so I'll get... Um, my support worker here, Chris, to help do the, do the slide and talk to you our way through it so everybody can understand what's going on, especially people who are blind or vision impaired and can't see the screen. Yep. yep, and before we do the slide, there's someone backstage, Wendy, would like to bring Wendy up. You there, Wendy? Hello? Wendy, you there? Don't know what's going on. Okay. All right, so Chris is going to bring those slides up and we'll talk our way through it. Well, I'll get Chris to talk you our way through it and explain what's going on. So, okay, Chris, thank you. Um, okay. So, let's bring up the slides. Um, the first slide that we have here is from the NDIS website. Um, it's on the grants pages, which is funded projects. And this is the um, 
Disabled Peoples and Families Organisation. And we have a document here, which is the 2018, so it's a 2018, 2019 uh, financial year. And it's a document that has the grant round recipients. Um, and it's got some, uh, it says these are organisations meet the following criteria, actively demonstrate their commitment to social model of disabilities, which seeks to remove barriers from people with disabilities and access mainstream services and live an ordinary life. Uh, are run by and for the people with disabilities and or their families and are later controlled by people with disabilities and or their families with a minimum membership of 50% people with disabilities um, and their families make up the organisation's board staff and volunteers. The, um, the next slide is actually from the um, the document itself, and this is just one of the excerpts from it. Uh, the first column has got the organisation which won the grant, and it's the Growing Space Limited. It's in South Australia. Um, there's at the final column, there are some descriptions of what the grant money was for. So between the, the first grant was to provide to do training and research with people with disabilities. Um, and the second column was to provide a, it says, individual capacity building, leader consortium of registered support coordinating businesses to develop a clearinghouse of diverse range of resources designed for and by self-managers, including training material videos drawn from a human library of self-managers from diverse community checklists and action plan templates that will be freely available through the Hub website. We go on to the next page. Now this is the growing space, which was the winner of that grant. And this is Sam Payor, P-A-I-O-R, uh, founded and directs the growing space. And that's her biography there. It's got a lot more information about her. It's available on her website. The following page is uh, Sam Payor's profile page from the Self Managers Hub. Um, so they, uh, she's obviously well, it, it, it's, it seems that the grant money has been used to create the self managers hub to provide this information. Um, and she's part of that group. We have uh, further down in the profiles, we also have George Talaporos, um, and he's listed as the secretary on the self managers hub. And then the last slide has the, uh, on the NDIS website, has uh, Sam and George uh, with their profile pages on the IAC website. Now, the grant that was given to Growing Spaces was to provide free information now, we, to people in the self managers hub. Now, when you go to the Self Managers Hub uh, website, you, there's a subscription fee of uh, $98 a year for individuals and $198 a year for corporate. And it also tells you um, that you can get this reimbursed with your core funding. So it's not free. You've got to pay for it. Um, also in the Self Managers Hub, they have a little blurb in there um, talking about um, how they can teach you to be creative and innovative um, using your funding, which to me sounds a bit like, you know, we'll show you how to get more out of your funding by fudging the lines. Now. That's my opinion, but the grant said for them to get that two hundred and forty thousand dollars in grants for the self managers up, they're supposed to provide information for free. Some of it is, but the subscription, which comes out, you can get reimbursed for any or funding, um, makes it not free. It also says that you know, the, the subscription helps the ongoing cost of updating information, which I think they will just copy and paste from the NDIS website. Um, 
Now, I've been part of different committees over the years, um, and uh, two times we've had to create policies and procedures for organisations, and what we did was go to other organisations, go through their policies, policies and procedures manual and cannibalise it, meaning that we just took bits and pieces from other organisations to create our own policies and procedures. Now, it's not illegal to do that. Um, it's quick and easy to do it that way rather than someone to sit there and type it all out. But I don't know. Why is these IAC members able to collect $240,000 in grant funding? Now, there's also, we come across a university who got a grant of $375,000 for some, some sort of research. And when you looked into it, oh, uh, once again, there's an IAC member, a part of that as well. What the hell's going on? Is it a boys' club with the IAC and the, and the board? And Bill Shorten and the NDIS? We, we found these things fairly quickly. Now, they mightn't be illegal, but they're certainly unethical, in my opinion, for IAC members or board members to have so many fingers and so many different pies and all these organisations get grants. It's it's unethical. It, it sh sh should just not happen. It should not happen. If you're going to be a member of the IAC or the NDIA board, then you need to recuse yourself or step down away from these organisations applying for grants. I know in a lot of cases, all you have to do is acknowledge that you're on the IAC. But every committee I've been a member of, and I've tried to get minutes and the agenda from the IAC for 12 months in an in a, in accessible format. I've written to the Secretariat, the, to, to the IAC, and they just said, go to the website and they provided the link. Now I use a screen reader because I'm blind and I can't open PDF files and my computer's not compatible with Adobe. 12 months have been after minutes in the agenda from the IAC for the last five years in an accessible format. The IAC wouldn't even talk to me. Not one member from the IAC would talk to me. And the chair of the IAC, Leah Van Poppel, wouldn't talk to me. So last week I ran up the NDIS and I told them I wanted a copy, I asked them for a copy of the minutes and the agenda of the IAC for the last five years. And they said, I oh, can't you go to the website? And I said, no, I'm blind, it's not accessible. And it's really hard to find anything the way it's laid out. So she tried to find somebody to talk to so I could get the minutes and the agendas in an accessible format. and she couldn't find a contact person. All she could find was an email address to the IAC Secretariat. And she's asked on my behalf for this information. Now, it's only been a week and I've still heard nothing. And you can also remember I lodged a complaint with Bill Shorten about George Teleporis and that cartoon he put up. And we referred to support workers as bum wipers, and all they're there to do is wipe bums and cut up carrots. And what did Bill Shorten do? Referred it off to the NDIS. What the hell's going on? You know, everybody's ripping into the NDIS participants, but what about the IAC and the, and the NDIA board? the NDIA senior management and Bill Shorten. What the hell's going on? Now, I previously mentioned about the AICD, which is the Australian Institute of Corporate, uh, Company Directors. Now, I mentioned that just under half of the IAC and the uh, NDIA board were members or graduates of the AICD. 
And now all that information has been removed from those websites. So they are listening, but not answering. So to, to Lee Van Poppel, who's chair of the IAC, um, who I know has a copy of that letter I sent to Bill Shorten, I know you have a copy. And you've had a copy for a few weeks. And she's also a board member of the NDIA. Now, I was told, I've done some research and investigations, and I spoke to previous um, senior admin people of the NDIA, and apparently they're all on gag orders from Bill Shorten. That's what I've been told. That's what I believe. That Bill Shorten has a gag order that nobody can talk to anybody about there, only he can. Now, Bill, isn't the Independent Advisory Council there to represent people with disabilities? Now, our representatives, why have an IAC, if we can't access those members of the IAC, and I've emailed more than half of them individually over the last 12 months, but no response, how can they represent us if they can't talk to us or if they refuse to talk to us. To have a truly independent advisory council, then Bill Shorten, you should not be putting them into those positions. They should be elected by participants of the NDIS. Now, Bill Shorten, he appoints all the members to the to the NDIS board and to the IAC. So they're all handpicked. Now, I know I interviewed um, someone late last year who's been on the NDIS, uh, under the IAC. So she's only new. But I think she would be, would be and is an asset to the IAC. The rest should go. The rest should go. We should be electing them. If they're our representatives, then we should be electing them, not handpicked from a boys' club, from the AA, uh, parts of the AICD, or because they're, they're part of the Labor Party or have affiliations somewhere along the line. Be open and transparent. You make all these reforms for the NDI's participants which I do agree with, it needs to be reformed. The money's just being wasted. It's being rotted. Not just by participants, by businesses and organised crime. Now, according to Paul Enhancer's uh, thing on YouTube the other day, um, the, the current head of the Quality and Safeguards Commission, um, before he looked at position, I think it was the AFP who worked for something, Australian Federal Police, he said estimated 20% of the money that's been spent on the NDIS is for organised crime. Now he's part of the Quality and Safeguards Commission. He thinks it could be doubled. So 40% of the NDIS have been rotted by organised crime. Yep. Oh, hi, Abe. How you going? Um, Abe has his own YouTube channel. Um, Really nice bloke. He's a, one of the true gentlemen on, on YouTube. Um, welcome, mate. Um, haven't seen um, haven't seen you for a while, but I haven't met on uh, YouTube through the day all that much. So anyway, thanks, Abe. Um, but like I was saying, $45 billion a year and by 2030, it's expected up to 90 billion if the, these reforms don't come in. Now, I remember what it was like prior to the NDIS. All I did was get on the computer, did work on that for an hour or two, got up, went to the TV, watched an hour of that, got up, went back to the computer, because that's all I could afford to do. I don't get a full disability pension, I only get half a disability pension because my wife works. 
and I think that's fair enough. I think it, I think it should be um, means tested. The, the disability support pension. I don't have a problem with that. that, that that's fair enough. Um, Paula Hanson also said that she's going to introduce um, something to Parliament in the next week or so, this couple of weeks, to have the NDIS means tested. In her words, why are multi-millionaires getting free services? I think if people can afford to do things for themselves, they should. And I said so many times in the past, one of the biggest mistakes the government did when they were bringing out the NDIS was that the trial period was nowhere near long enough or wide enough because they severely underestimated how much it costs the families and friends or people with disabilities to help support, support them. And if they couldn't afford it, they just went without, which is what I did for decades before I got into the NDIS. Never went out. I still don't go out. My wife and I haven't been on. We've been on one holiday since 2012. And that was for a week. Because we just can't afford it. Just like everyone else in the country. But these grants, like I said, they're taking hundreds of millions of dollars. And how do we know if they're being used properly? It's so hard to find the information. You, know, you go into one link, then you go into another link, then you go into another link, then you go back to the previous link, then you go to another link, then you go back to the previous link. You have so many pages open, it's so hard to keep track of. But Paul Hanson is right. The rorting's got to stop. And the, some of these fundings, like these growing spaces, $240,000. And part of that grant was that it has to be free. The information has to be free. But to be a member of the self-managers hub, you have to pay 100 bucks a year. But you can claim that out of your core support funding from the NDIS. So it's not free. It's not free. So, like I always say, don't take my word for it. Look into it for yourself. Make your own informed decision. It truly is amazing that these IAC members have so many fingers and so many different pies, director of this and board member of that and getting grants for this and helping others get funding that they're part of the research of. And it's ridiculous. If you're on the IAC, then you should recuse yourself from being a board member or director of a company that's getting funding, grant, grant funds from, from the NDIS. It's a conflict of interest. Like I said, every time I, I've been a member of so many committees over the years, and on the agenda is always conflicts of interest. You have to notify the committee you're on if there's a conflict of interest. And these grant applications are a conflict of interest because you know what the hell's going on. I know one IAC member on, on LinkedIn gave a heads up to a job that hadn't, hadn't even been advertised yet to another person on LinkedIn. So what do we do? Who do we go to to stop this from happening? We can't go to the IAC because they don't respond. You go to Bill Shorten, he just fobs off to the NDIS. You can't go to the NDIA board members because they don't respond either. So where do we go to? Who do we turn to? The Quality and Safeguards Commission is so overwhelmed. with investigations in, into breaches of the NDIS. Like there's tens of thousands of complaints a year. 
So who do we turn to? Who's our representatives? How, how do we get to talk to them? How do we get help? Now, on LinkedIn the other day, um, I read that um, a NDIS participant with a disability decided to go out to self-manage and she accidentally um, did some things that she shouldn't have done and she had to pay back you know, $27,000, which she couldn't do. So she, I can't say the word, so I have to say she unalived herself. Now, why isn't the self-managers up saying to self-manage, you need to have qualifications or experience in bookkeeping or accounting? You know, and also, what happened to the NDIS? Yeah, why wasn't it picked up when she hit five thousand dollars? But they waited till she reached twenty-seven thousand dollars, couldn't pay it back, got overwhelmed, and she unalived herself. I don't know this person. Th this young young woman, she's in her late twenties. I don't know her. I don't know if she had the ability to, to, to self-manage. I was given the option to self-manage because my wife's a bookkeeper. And she's done bookkeeping and accounting. She does basses. She's done it since she was 15. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. I don't want the responsibility. So every time I apply for something, I always go through my um, support coordinator. I get approval first and then go get the, Get, get the item. Because I don't want the responsibility of making a mistake and have to pay it back. Now, we all remember the uh, robo debt through Centrelink. And there was quite a lot, over a dozen people unalive themselves because robo debt made a mistake. Are we going to go down that track now with the NDIS? Uh, is the IAC going to make recommendations about people not having the qualifications or experience being able to self-manage? You can't ask them that question because they won't respond. Hypocrites. Let's keep the IAC, but let's have those positions elected. So the average person can reach out to members of the IAC for assistance or guidance. Now, we all know there's been multiple deaths by bad service providers over the last 12 months. And now people uh, becoming self-managers who don't have the qualifications or experience and acquiring debts that they can't pay back. So the only option they have to themselves is to unalive themselves. It's not right. Not right. Shame on the IAC. Shame on the NDIA board. Shame on Bill Shorten for fobbing everything off. Like I said, I've spoken to people who worked up in senior management of the NDIA. Um, they left in disgust at the way it was run. One woman who left uh, her position as a senior manager in the senior management part of the NDIA left because she wasn't happy that the way things were being run. And lo and behold, she's now a board member of the NDIA. And that's a fact. I know it's a fact. I've got the proof. I've been sent information by an ex-employee. 
of the senior management of the NDIA. So do your own research. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Make your own informed decision. And let me know. Go to my, YouTube, my, my email address is blindadvocate007 at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. Or you can contact me on LinkedIn, um, through Facebook, Instagram, all through them. I don't know. Uh, there's no comments or anything? Okay. Well, we might end it there. Um, these grants are a joke. They really are. You know, people on the OAC getting all these grants. And they have so many fingers and so just go and check it out for yourself. Find out the IAC members' names and do a search on them. You'll be surprised. Uh, we'll leave it there. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, oh, just one other thing before I go. Um, as you know, uh, my last stream we talked about the, um, the accessibility to the New South Wales train stations and the letter I received um, after I recommended the uh, mod test um, system that's been trialled in, in Melbourne. Um, I wrote another letter back. Um, it was quite a stern letter. Um, I've got a copy of that uh, and I'll probably do that in the next stream. Hopefully I'll get another response from the uh, Minister of Transport in New South Wales. Um, and, and I'll talk about that in the, on the next live stream if there's a response. All right, just might end it there. Thanks everyone for listening. Well, the information's there if you want it. The NDIS people um, in the system dabbling in the, the to the funds as well. I'm Dr. J. W. Morrison, theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now.